The first page of a new sketchbook can be terrifying. We have this beautiful, untouched book full of possibilities, each blank page brimming with potential. There's no discounting the importance of a sketchbook. This is where you experiment and explore. Once completed, it'll house a record of time spent painting, pages full of stories, both on the paper and what was going on in your life at that time. But even knowing all this, that first page is still a little daunting. So what I'm going to show you in this video is three steps to starting a sketchbook that you love and that inspires you every time you sit down to paint. Step one, choose colours that you love. Colour is so important when it comes to art. We can use them to create mood and atmosphere, show light and create a feeling. So let's start our new sketchbook with colours that we love and that we want to see. For me, this is always going to be blues and greens. Even without any details over the top, these colours make me happy. They immediately give me a feeling of being deep in the forest, and that's definitely my happy place. I've grabbed a selection of colours. This is Prussian blue, primary blue, permanent middle green, and cobalt turquoise light, plus primary yellow and white. These are analogous colours, so they're next to each other on the colour wheel. This will mean that we create a lovely harmony in the finished page, but it also means that I don't have to worry about any of the colours mixing together to create mud. So this first double spread is huge, and I don't really want to get too fussy creating a complicated plan for a scene. So I'm going to take a large brush. I normally use a half inch angled shader for backgrounds, but that's quite small for this area. So I've got a three quarter inch angled shader instead. And I'm just going to paint the colour onto the page. Nothing fancy here, just grabbing a different colour each time, mixing those colours together on the palette to create new ones, and then very roughly spreading them out onto the page. I worked on one side of the spread at a time and created almost a vignette effect with the darker colours around the edge and lighter in the centre. Using the brush to blend the colours together roughly and adding more paint whenever I needed to build up the opacity. And I'm left with this gorgeous background. The more I look at this, the more little things I begin to notice. How these lines of colour feel like different layers of the scene and how this little lighter spot looks like something magical hidden in the shadows. And these little sparks of ideas bring us to step two, adding simple silhouettes. I love to paint silhouettes. It's such a low pressure way to add interesting elements without getting bogged down with color and details. So I'm gonna start in the background here with a slightly darker green and my size six round petal brush. This is like a round brush with a super pointy tip. And I'm gonna add a selection of plants and grasses. These shapes go perfectly with the foresty vibe of the background colors. But these silhouettes could be whatever you wanted. It might be a city skyline, the silhouette of a distant castle, or some epic mountains. Think about the type of scene that your colours inspire and go from there. I want to create multiple layers of these silhouettes so I'm adding a little extra water to the bottom edge and blurring this out into the background, ready to add those additional layers over the top. This is the round pedal brush next to a regular round brush and you can see that bit of extra length and how sharp the tip is. Makes it perfect for fine grasses and other planty details. I want to create a little bit of texture and magic in the background here. So I'm going to paint some little circles with a thin mixture of white, so plenty of water added in there. This will make the spots a bit more transparent as they dry and we get this really pretty little twinkly texture that we can build up in layers. Now on to more silhouettes and these will be a similar mixture of plants and leafy things but a little darker and more detailed as we add each closer layer. I want to create a sense of overgrown busyness and we'll begin to tease a forest out of the background, 
just using a single colour and the magic of silhouettes. In the foreground we can get a little bolder, and here I'll add a larger tree shape, but still just an uncomplicated silhouette. And around this we'll pick out some larger plants. Now down at the bottom here, I want to do something a little different, so I'm going to add some water, and this is so easy to do using just a little bit of white gouache. We spend so much of our time trying to stop the colours mixing through the layers with gouache, but that's exactly what we want here. We'll let the white gouache pick out the shoreline, and then let it blend with the blues and greens down here to create our water. I'm using a half inch flat for this and keeping all of my brush strokes horizontal on the page. Moving over to the left side here, we have this nice dark area. Looks like maybe there could be some tall rocks or something like that. So let's have a little waterfall appearing from up here. And we'll do this by dragging the white on the brush straight down on the page. This first layer can be a thinner mix, but we'll brighten this up in a moment. And then we can finish off the water's edge over here. A little white gouache straight from the tube and an almost dry brush creates a great waterfall texture. Just drag down from the top to create this and you can build it up in layers until you're happy. I feel like this bottom corner needs something bold and dark, so I'm using my darkest mixture, this is Prussian blue and a little middle green, to create the silhouettes of some rocks. I want to give my waterfall some trees and bushes to keep it company, so more silhouettes tucked back here will work. And at that, I thought I was done. A page of gorgeous colours and simple silhouettes to begin my new sketchbook. But a curious thing happens when you paint in this way, letting your imagination take over. You begin to have more and more little sparks of ideas. So if you wanted to paint this and call it finished, that's perfectly fine. But if you do happen to get another little spark, then you're ready to move on to step three, which is details. Here you'll continue to develop your painting as ideas occur to you. Initially, this might be to flesh out the layers with additional silhouettes. I also wanted to add more of these little spots of light floating between the layers of the scene. Maybe they're coming out of the water or going in whichever we might imagine. Apart from the water, we've mostly used layers of darker colours over lighter ones, but we have these dark areas down at the bottom of the page here. So what about if we added some nice bright plant silhouettes here? Again, nothing too fancy, just simple shapes of leaves and grasses to give a bit of interest to this otherwise dark area. Everything that we've done so far has been silhouettes, but I want to give this big tree a little dimension. I don't want to make it super detailed, this page is all about simple techniques and enjoying the process but maybe a little moss and some texture on the trunk. So with a filbert brush, I'm using the same green as the plants to create an area of lighter green, focusing on the leftmost edge of the tree roots here, just little scruffy brush marks to pick out the moss. We can blend this brighter green back into the darker trunk with some scruffy dry brushing with the trunk colour, and we can also use this darker green to pick apart some individual leaves on the plant silhouettes, choosing which ones fall behind 
and adding the shadows accordingly. All of these little extra details I'm adding help to flesh out this closest section of the scene and give us lots of interesting things to look at. But we're still only using simple shapes and single colours. Over on this left side, I'll use some more dry brushing to pick out some moss on the rocks here. And I'll add another larger tree to enclose this side of the scene. Finally, I decided to add the little light spots disappearing behind the rocks over here with a little glow to help break apart all of the shadows and create a sense of depth. So next time you start a new sketchbook, jump right in with these three steps. Start with colours that you love, build your scene with beautifully simple silhouettes, and then if you feel inspired to, add a sprinkle of details to finish. Every time you open your sketchbook, you'll get a glimpse of all these things that make you happy and you'll be ready to paint your next adventure.